You're now tuned in to San Quentin's Ear Hustle from PRX's Radiotopia. The following podcast contains language and sexual content that may not be appropriate for all listeners. Before we get started with the episode, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Three weeks, 18 days. And that's because there was a lockdown. There was a major lockdown based on the safety and security of this institution. What happens during a lockdown? During the lockdown, we're stuck in our cells 24 hours a day. Initially, the only time we leave the cells is every 72 hours when we go take a shower. What about eating? Eating, they bring the food to the cell. How's it feel to be back in the studio working? Well, it feels great. We have a lot of work to do. Um, We have listeners out there. We must, we must keep happy. Well, I know we fell a little bit behind, but I don't think too far behind, and I know we're both ready to get back into it and get things done. Oh, yeah, I'm all gas, no brakes. I'm with you on that. So um, let's get to the episode then. Indeed. The first hour and the last hour of all the visits, the patio was couples only. I'm Erlon Woods, a prisoner at San Quentin State Prison in California. And I'm Nigel Poor, a visual artist who volunteers at San Quentin. And together, we're going to take you inside. E, you're not married. No, never been married. And since you're not married, as a resident of San Quentin, you don't have certain privileges. Like what you getting at, Nige? Well, I'm getting at married people and how they get their time together. That's what we're talking about on this episode today. Marriage, sex, and prison. When people think about having sex in prison, they always bring up dropping the soap and all that bullshit. That shit is cliche. It don't go down like that. It's way more complicated. And for some married inmates, it's really complicated. Some of them are allowed conjugal visits. Only four states allow them. Connecticut, New York, Washington, and here in California. People outside call them conjugal visits, but in here, we call them family visits. At San Quentin, the married guys who have them get to spend 48 hours with their family in a cottage on prison grounds. Okay, that's the official, legitimate way. But people being who they are, they're going to find a way to do their thing. And I'm not saying that this happens here at San Quentin, but sometimes people do find a workaround. Well, my special lady, her name is uh, Kathy, and we've been together for 21 years. That's Maverick. He's been locked up for about 20 years for robbery and murder. For the last six years, he's been at San Quentin. Mav and his girlfriend Kathy were together for eight months before they got married while he was in a county jail waiting on trial. We thought that was the only way that we was gonna be able to, you know, to be intimate. But lo and behold, when I got to prison, they was like, Oh, lifers don't get family visits. So I was like, oh, oh, Lord, what am I going to tell her? Well, we're going to hear what he told her. But first, let's bring in another inmate, Greg Eskridge. I met my wife in 2014, and we got married 10 months later on um, October 11th. Unlike Maverick, Greg met and married his wife while he was already in prison with the life sentence for murder. You know, it used to surprise me when I heard that guys got married to women they met after they came into prison. Why? Well, before I spent time in here and I got to know the guys inside, I just couldn't understand why you would marry someone who was incarcerated. And I also didn't understand how you would meet somebody. Oh, it's a lot of gang ways to meet people. You can meet people through family members. You can meet them through pen pal agencies, through ads in the newspaper. Or you can actually be on a visit and somebody might be eyeing you out there. Somebody else's family member might be checking you out. It's a gang of ways. (laughs) So basically, it's like dating on the outside. Exactly. Greg was looking at his first family visit, his first conjugal visit with his wife. We recorded him several times as the big day drew near. We got a bit of his history and what his hopes and fears were. So today is April 15th, 2017, and my family visit is May 13th. 2017, next month, so that's 28 days away. The countdown has begun. I was 19 years old when I left the streets. I've had some some sexual experiences, but it's been a big gap 
from 19 to 43. Being away from it for so long, it's like, am I going to touch her the, the, the right way? You know, she's a soft, delicate woman. And inside of prison, you're, you're so used to giving handshakes, like rough, big, you know, like, yeah, you know, the rough handshake and the, the manly macho thing. But now you have this sweet, delicate flower that you're going to be touching. And I don't want my, I don't want to get too excited to where I'm so happy to be with her that I'm like, bruiser, <laughs> just grabbing her and holding her uh, tight. Greg's a big guy, you know, six foot four, muscled, big smile, big personality. And he works down in the media lab with us on San Quentin Radio. On the first recording, we asked him to imagine what it was going to be like. You know, I thought about going to sleep with my wife, and I was wondering, like, would I really, like, wake up and be startled that there's actually somebody next to me? Because I've been sleeping in the bed by myself for 23 years. And so to actually have somebody with you in the bed is going to be like, Man, this is crazy. You know, the cottage where Greg is going to spend these few days with his wife is right next to the media lab. Like, we can see him. I know. <laughs> we can see, I mean, that's if they come outside, but they don't. They don't. I wouldn't come outside. It doesn't look like much, but from what I've heard and what Greg's heard, it's not like our tiny cells. They even have, like, real mirrors. Wow. Because inside the prison, we don't have, like, glass mirrors. The mirrors are basically, like, plastic mirrors um you get to go in the bathroom and you can actually close the door behind you you know i get a chance to actually prepare a meal from scratch with my wife i'm gonna be able to wash out a skillet i'm gonna be able to put my hands in dawn dish soap and scrub the pot and pan and the and the fork and then dry it up and put it back in the cabinet and this will actually be the first time i've actually seen my wife in the sunlight. Okay, this is a really big deal. Because up until this point, Greg could only see his wife in the visiting room at San Quentin. And that's indoors with tile floors and like really ugly fluorescent lighting. (laughs) Right? I mean, what do you want now? It's just prison. But at least with the recent change, Greg now has a chance to see his wife and be with his wife in private. You know, when Maverick went in, like 20 years ago, lifers, as he said, even if they were married, they didn't have his privilege. When Maverick was new to prison, he could only see his wife in the visiting room on visiting days. I was just happy that she drove the seven hours to come and see me. Now, Maverick wasn't at San Quentin. He actually never said which prison he was in. But what he did say was that they had a very relaxed environment when it came to the visiting room. At this particular prison... There was an understanding in the visiting room between uh, inmates. And the first hour and the last hour of all the visits, the patio was couples only. Wasn't no babies allowed outside. Grandma wasn't able to come out. And if grandma did come out, she had to watch out because... We was out there uh, doing adult things. Just to reiterate, this understanding was not between staff or administration. This was strictly between convicts. For Maverick, this was like a revelation. And first visit, I didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. We just observed. We was we was we was used, you know. Oh, y'all need us to watch. Okay, this is how it goes. Okay. And we just observed. And when she seen it, her initial uh, attitude was like, oh, no, I, uh-uh, I, I can't do that out here. People watching. You, And I was like, all right, it's OK, babe. And I just let her observe. And I observed. And she started asking questions. It's like, oh, what they doing over there? I was like, what you think they doing over there? They 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 being intimate, girl. They they getting it in. On a second visit, Maverick and Kat went outside to the patio again. So this is the scene. It's all ages, all ages, all types, all colors. It's like the United Nations of consummating. There's five tables, and each table has a couple. And 
these tables are, what is this? About a foot and a half, two feet apart from each other. So we got us a table and uh, we started we started getting close and we was watching everybody else to get some pointers, some ideas on how to do it. No one gets naked out there. Everything is as discreet as possible. When you when you know that everyone else is out there trying to do the same thing, it kind of uh, takes the tension off. It makes it easier for you to fornicate in public. Hey, Greg, Greg. Greg, can you come here a second? What's up, what's up, man? Well, I'm just doing a check-in. Uh, how many days now to your family visit? Oh, man, I got like 20 days. And when was the last time you saw your wife? Last time I saw her was, uh, was yesterday. So what did you guys talk about in terms of the family visit? Actually, we talked about her bringing some soft, big, fluffy pillows to just, you know, lay my head on. So I'm looking forward to that. Describe to me what you think it's going to be like putting your head on one of those pillows. Oh, man, I could just imagine like a big old soft marshmallow. She, she can bring a comforter. Um, she can bring some, some sheets and some sheets with some color because we have just regular white sheets. So I don't want to see white sheets. I want to see some sheets with some color. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the bed. So I'm going to have like a mattress cover and then I'm going to put the sheet on top of the mattress and then the other sheet and then I'm going to lay the uh, the comforter down and so just being able to you know slide on those nice soft uh, sheets and you know to feel that comforter and I could just imagine it's going to just be comfort after comfort I'm going to go to sleep in comfort and I'm going to wake up with comfort all around me so wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute you talked about the sheets and you got something soft next to you <laughs> well, the sheets and my woman is going to be softness around me. <laughs> We're going to check back in with Greg later. Yeah, enough talk about sheets and comforter. I want to know what's cracking on that patio with Mav and Kat. I have been at this prison for two years, and we had mastered the art of being intimate on the patio. It got us to talking. And she was like, I wish I could have a kid right now. And that got me to thinking. I'm like, oh, man, this is the only thing that you can give her. You uh, you should go in here and give her this. And from that one visit to the next visit, I ate nothing but seafood. All oysters, all mackerel. He's talking about oysters and mackerels in a pouch that you can get out of the canteen. I didn't touch myself, and I held on to it. And I was, I was planning. I was like, this time, I'm going to make sure to give you what you want. And I'm like, oh, ooh, I got a surprise for you, girl. Out of all the times we was, we was having a chance to do it, never had we had an opportunity to just be by ourselves. That changed one day in visiting when his homeboy came up to him with a golden opportunity. This blood cat, he say, hey, Mav, what's happening? I'm going to test your pimping today. I say, what? What out here? What, what you want to get down to something? He's like, no, youngster, I'm trying to see what you're working with. I'm like, what I'm working with? What is you talking about? And he's like, you and your girl want to wanna go to the boom boom room? I was like, the boom boom room? So I tell her about it. She's like, it's a room? Where we can be by ourselves? Where? So he showed me to get down. It's four couples. And we all standing in front of this door. And the person at the beginning of the, of the line, they go into the room. While the other three couples stand out and make a, a wall. And when they come out, we block as they come out. And they just come back and filter in line and... I tell Kat, I'm like, come on, girl, let's go. And she's, she's spooked. She's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about it. I'm like, baby, follow my lead. When the next couple came out, I took the lead, went inside that room, and we closed the door. And it's total darkness. Total darkness. 
That's just not something you experience. No, in there's never total darkness. There's always light. They always want to see you. So you never get total darkness. It's silent. It's complete darkness. And I can hear my, my heart in my ears. It's <laughs> and I'm so spooked. And we just standing there holding each other. And then she just started laughing. And I started laughing. So it kind of like broke the tension. And then that's when our hands start uh, fumbling through the darkness. And we we getting acquainted with each other the way we ain't been able to be acquainted. I'm, I'm lifting up her dress and I'm fondling, I'm gripping on her butt and I'm trying to, I'm trying to find where I'm going to go. When I do, I grab my pants and I'm trying to find my little fella. And the worst thing in, that could ever happen to a male happened. ED. <laughs> I don't know if it was erectile dysfunction or it was just butterflies but my little fella didn't want to come out to play he's scared it's dark so i said baby this this ain't never happened to me what's what's going on and she said don't worry baby i'm scared too and she 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 grabbed my little guy and she helped me out and i was like yay and at that moment, I know that it was supposed to be. Hey, Greg. Hey, what's up, Nigel? Uh, what's the date today? Oh, uh, today is May 15th, 2017. And what's significant about today? Oh, man. This is when I came back from my family visit. Where to start? Where so to when you opened the door, what did it look like? <laughs> you know, it actually looks like, it looks like some project apartments. That's what it looks like. The project, like in the Jordan Downs in Watts. That's, like, that's like kind of, it's real small. And well, so how did that feel? I'm going to tell you, when I first walked in the door, I just looked around. I just started laughing to myself because I've been waiting on this for so long, right? tears coming out my eyes and I'm still laughing and it's just like damn it's just it was overwhelming because when I first opened up the refrigerator I'm like damn this is a refrigerator you know but you know the one thing I really tripped off of when I opened up the freezer was the ice cube tray and I'm like damn as soon as I seen it, I immediately grabbed it and and like cracked it and so you know to separate the ice cubes but it had been so long since I've seen it I was just like damn I turned the shower on just to just to clean it and, I'm, and at first, I'm like, damn, like, which direction does it go? Because I'm used to just one little knob, you turn on, whatever whatever comes out is what you get. But now, here it is, I have all these different options. So I finally figured out how you got to turn it down this way just to get the water to come on. And then you have the actual hot and cold. So I got to play with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got everything ready. And then she finally uh, she finally came and uh, police opened up the door and I went outside you know, and I just walk past her, you know, just give her a little kiss on the cheek real quick and smile at her. I haven't had that experience of going to to my woman's car and like helping her with the luggage. So as I'm grabbing the luggage, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like really like proud, like I'm happy, like, damn, like I get to, you know, be like helpful. So I gave her a hug and gave her a kiss and... It was like that pause where I just said, baby, let's, let's enjoy this. We got a few days in here. There's no need to rush. So let's just, let's just take our time through this. Um, you know, we talked and then I put some music on. And, um, you know, then ultimately there was enough talking. You know, <laughs> I think I took my time enough. We began to do our thing. And, you know, like I say, I, I took my time. No holes barred, just us. And it's like, like, damn, like, here we are. Like, damn, baby, we on a family visit. I think I said that like, like 50 times. I just kept on saying like, like, baby, every time we did something, like if somebody there cooking, I'm like, damn, baby, we cooking. Hey, so uh, can you run us through the last hour of your family visit? It started to sink in that it was that it was coming to an end, 
And so we took our last shower together, had our last meal together. And for the last little while, we just sat there and just and just quiet. Because I mean, there was nothing need to be said. You know, it was let's enjoy each other, you know, in silence. We come out the room and I say it couldn't have been no more than five minutes. If that, we walk outside and, you know, our eyes have to adjust to the light because we've been in the dark being naughty. And uh, tobacco was still legal in prison, so you can smoke on the patio. And we had a, a cigarette and I'm standing against the wall and she just like uh, leaned against me with her head on my chest. And we just, we talked without talking. You know, we just held each other. She said that she was happy to be with me. Just that one little moment made all the rest of the time that we wasn't able to be together just melt away. It was like we was a regular couple. We wasn't in prison. We was just us. Yeah. How many days has it been since your family visit? Um, it's been about a, about a week, probably. Tell me, how's it been post-family visit? Ah, well, you know, it's been tough, you know, coming back. Um, after spending that time away from this place, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard walking around this prison now and to face this reality of a of a of not just only prison but the reality of having a life sentence in prison been walking around i've almost been like in a in a somewhat state of depression i seen her yesterday um, for the first time actually in a regular visit but it's but but it's, you can tell that it is it, it's, it's, it's getting harder for both of us for me it was like getting a taste of freedom and then for her, it was like getting a taste of, of her husband. And now that separation is back. The visit is over, and I have to wait another month before I see her again. When I come in the visit room, I, I see her, and I'm walking up to her with my arms wide, and then she just... Punched me. She just socked me in my chest. Bow. I'm like, oh, what is you doing, girl? She's like, you got me pregnant. I'm like, Mazel tov. <laughs> You know, I'm like, and then, and then she just, she just hugged me. You know, I was like, that's what you wanted, right? And she just starts smiling. I was like, you know, you, you happy. She's like, yeah, I'm happy. And yeah. <laughs> So Maverick's at San Quentin now, and his son is 14 years old, and he's still with his wife, Kat. Right. And they have family visits um, maybe regularly. four times a year. Yeah, regularly, whenever you can get in. And now what's really important about them is that it is actually a family visit. It's not just about Mav and Kat being together. No, their son get to come, hang out with him. He gets to chill with his uh, child for a couple of days, you know. I think that's the really interesting thing about family visits. It's not just family about time. Family time. That's what it is. It's about reconnecting with your family. Right, and there's people who have visits with, like their mom comes or their sister. Right, right. It's, family visits is actually that family visits. You know, um, 48 hours. That's a lot. Well, also because you get to cook, you get to wake up together, you get to do chores together, you get to do all the things that you would do if you were home. And I'm guessing that actually keeps the prison safer. Yeah, because uh, most guys that get family visits don't want to get write-ups. Because if you get write-up, it takes you off the family visiting list for a certain amount of time until that's cleared. Yeah, so it gives you something to look forward to. Exactly. So Greg's having another family visit. I seen Greg this morning, and he was sitting there counting down. He was like, man, I can't wait till lunch is over. I can't wait till dinner is over because uh, I'm going to go to sleep early tonight, and tomorrow I'll be out there. So all that kind of heaviness he had around post-family visits gone? No, he might be better prepared now. Yeah. He didn't got the jitters out the way. 
you know, so he might the second time is, around. <laughs> is he still focused on the sheets and the comforters? I doubt that. I doubt that very serious. Now he was focused on time. Okay, we're going to take a short break. And when we get back, I've got a personal question for you. I. E, after the story and talking about this, don't you want to get married? You know, when I first came to prison, I could have got married. But in my mind, there was no reason to get married because for 20 years, there was no family visits for lifers like me. So my thinking was, I'm not going to incarcerate somebody else. What do you mean? I mean, like, when you get married, um, you're supposed to be able to consummate your marriage, you know, and all that stuff. So... Basically, I know I have a life sentence, and then I'll be putting somebody else in a situation where there's nothing they can do. I'm, I'm restricting someone, so I never wanted to really incarcerate someone else. But since family visits are back for lifers like me, I might be contemplating this marriage thing. Yes, yes. Thanks to Greg Eskridge and Maverick for sharing their stories with us, and also thanks to Antoine Williams for helping produce this story. Our guest sound designer is the Swedish phenom David Jazzy, who's also incarcerated here in San Quentin. Pat Masidi Miller is our outside production advisor. Our story editor is Curtis Fox, and our executive producer from Radiotopia is Julie Shapiro. Who happens to be in the studio with us today. How you doing, Julie? Hey, Erlan. Great to be here. We also want to thank Warden Ron Davis for allowing us the space to do this podcast. And as you know, every episode has to be approved by this guy right here. This is Lieutenant Sam Robinson, and I approve the story. So uh, while we got you in the studio, Julie, would you tell the listeners what's coming up next? I would love to. Next time on Ear Hustle, a story about celebration in prison. I never even received a birthday card as far as from, like, any of my family members. You know what I mean? So for... Here it is, a, a guy that I just met in prison, right, who I became close with, actually walked around and had everybody as far as who I communicate with and who I bond with to actually sign a birthday card and actually give it to me. But like everything else in prison, the story is never exactly what you think. I'm not racist, right, but Drew is actually my first white friend in prison and my only white friend. Ear Hustle is a proud member of Radiotopia from PRX, a collection of the best podcasts around. Radiotopia is made possible with support from the Knight Foundation. Hear more at radiotopia.fm. Thanks to everyone who's been sending us postcards with questions about life inside. We're going to continue answering them in future episodes, so please keep the kites coming. People have also been sending us great photos of what they're doing while they're listening. Like what? Like what? Like watching bees, building caskets, walking their cats, and writing letters to guys here at San Quentin on an old typewriter. We're posting these on our website, so if you're interested in participating, please send us your listening photos to info at earhustlesq.com. You can also find us at Ear Hustle SQ in all the usual places, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Nigel Poor. And I'm Erline Woods. Thanks for listening. Radio Tokyo from Pierre.